Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing a pen from Blue Dew. Now Blue Dew is a, uh, a Singapore based fountain pen company, I believe, uh, and they make this pen particularly, which uh, is kind of interesting. Firstly, this is the box the pen comes in. It is a fully functional pen case, not just a box. So great for traveling with the pen, storing it, all of that kind of stuff with a nice, it's a synthetic material and it's got like a little soft lining and all that kind of stuff and a magnetic clasp, uh, which is cool. Um, little name there on the front and this sort of like faux weave pattern on the body. Now you open it up and we get the pen. This is the Blue Dew Flex uh, in the tortoise shell material. Now it comes in a range of different materials, this pen. Uh, you can see blue drew there on the uh, barrel of the pen. Um, there are like blues and purples and greens and, you know, sort of a, a, yeah, a number of different uh, colors of this. Uh, I think there's a really nice red one as well from memory. Um, and of course they say uh, in their sort of advertising material, you know, keep the box because of course, like that is a nice little added touch and something that I think a lot of other pen companies can take on board is the fact that Blue Dew provides you with a case for the pen as the box. It's not a box that you just sort of throw away. So I'm going to run over the parts and features of this pen and the particular feature that I think we're all here to see, which is the flex. Um, and then we'll do some writing sample and pros and cons and all of that. Okay. So top of the pen, simple round um, pen made from acrylic. Um, this is uh, the tortoise shell, material, tortoise shell material is quite nice. It's sort of got these little hints of, um, you know, shimmer and stuff in the material, which is beautiful. It's got a gold colored metal clip, which is functional. And that's a, uh, you know, cut in to the cap there. The cap swells out slightly to the center. There's no center band. It's just a tiny little step down onto the barrel, uh, which goes straight through and then tapers down to another you know, round dome on the end. It is a screw to cap pen um, and it unscrews in one turn uh, and it's all plastic or acrylic on acrylic. Then we get the section, uh, which is tapers down and flares out and then we get a unique nib. And the unique nib, as you can see, got some nib creep there, uh, but it is a flex uh, nib. Now it does look somewhat familiar uh, and somewhat similar to something like, you know, the Zebra G nibs, um, but this is a proprietary nib. Um, and I think it's just taken a lot of inspiration from the G, even down to like having a big sort of embossed letter logo there on the f top. Um, but this is their own design and it is a flex nib. It is stainless steel uh, and there is, you know, the feed, which is really nice uh, and it all, it all comes down to one thing, like that this pen is designed for flex writing, uh, and that is what we're going to look at shortly. Now, the pen is a, st a standard international cartridge converter, and the converter is provided with the pen, which I really enjoy. Uh, and it is, yeah, a fairly sort of standard. It's not a big pen. It's lightweight, uh, but it is really simple and quite nice. Um, the other thing to take into account with this is what they say about the nib. Now, they say it runs from a Japanese extra fine through to about a double broad or a 1.5 millimeter line. Now that is a big call from a modern flex pen. Um, also from, you know, the fact that the pen, you are going to get extra fine lines because there is no tipping on that nib. And that is what allows us, and which is why I say it's also similar to like these sort of Zebra G nibs uh, that you use on dip pens and such. Um, so we're going to put that to the test, of course, in the writing sample. Um, I just want, I'll do a couple of quick size comparisons and then, um, yeah, we'll do a writing sample and I'll talk about some pros and cons. But uh, let's just quickly mention the sp uh, specifics of this pen. So it capped, it is 140 millimeters, which is a decent size. Um, uncapped, it's 125. So it is slight, it does feel small in your hand. It's a decent enough length and you can definitely write with it uncapped. Um, and then posted, it is 162, which makes it a fairly decent length pen. The section ranges from about nine millimeters through to about 11. So it's got a decent taper on it, but that little flare stops your fingers running down onto the nib. The weight of the pen is 21 grams, 13 in the body and nine, uh, sorry, 
13 in the body and eight in the calf. Um, so that eight doesn't necessarily back weight the pen. So you can definitely write with it in a fairly balanced way with the pen posted. Let's do some size comparisons now. So here is the um, the blue jew there in the, and we'll put it alongside, you know, that well-known pen, the Lamy Safari. So you can see they both come in at around the same length. That 140 mark is about where Lamy pitch a lot of their pens, and that has a lot to do with the length of the converter that they use. Um, if we uncap the pens now, you'll see the Lamy is a little bit longer, um, and it's got just got a longer section on it, uh, and I think that the actual like length of the Lamy is much better in the hand, just in terms of like the actual, you know, uh, writing length. Uh, and now if we post these two, posted, you can see that it comes out about the same length. You know, they're very, it's a very comfortable pen in the hand when it's posted. One other pen I quickly wanted to show it alongside, um, just because I'm going to do a video where I show these two um, together, um, is the Noodler's Triple Tail, which is another modern uh, flex pen, which is a big pen. Big, big pen. Um, and even unposted in its, you know, sort of writing form, it's a bigger size pen. The difference between these two pens, you know, in terms of what they actually do is in the nib. So whereas the, uh, the Blue Jew here has that sort of very slim, no tipping, you know, flexible steel nib, the Triple Tail is actually a, uh, looks like it's bent out, of, bent out actually. Uh, it's a, it's a three tined nib. Uh, which allows for um, the the line width to be coming from a less flex, slightly less less flexible nib. Um, I'm yet to ink up or even write with this. It's come out of the box today, uh, but I will be doing a video where I compare the two. Um, so wait for that. We're all here today to see how this pen writes. So here I have my Clairefontaine 90 gram paper as per usual, and what we have here is the Blue Dew. Flex, and this is the tortoise shell. Um, it's their proprietary uh, flex nib, um, which doesn't go by uh, like a number five or six, you know, size, of course, it's their own proprietary uh, nib. So, I should say the ink in this is uh, Monteverde, California, California, oh gosh, a uh, teal. So you would hear the writing in standard writing form has a sort of a scratchy sound. Now I'm writing on this angle a bit uh, here because this is more like how a right-handed writer uh, would experience the pen because it's got no tipping it's not that smoothed out nib you are going to feel a scratchy sensation you know it's not the smoothest nib but it's not designed for that and i don't think it's designed for everyday writing like i think we can actually say that straight out um but what it is designed for is flex now you'll know, just quickly do these other you know reverse writing, which is actually quite, you know, I don't know what that was. Uh, it's okay. Um, in terms of wetness, it lays down a lot of ink. The feed and the flow of this pen is great, and that's because it needs to be able to flex. So let's see how that goes. So this is no pressure. When it keeps up. And then this is with, and I'll sort of start to gradiate that pressure. That's a considerable line variation. It's designed for that. Let's see it sort of in a bit more sort of. Like that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, so if we just get it scribbling a bit and then. This is the issue with some flex bends is the fact that when you have flexed it out, it sometimes can take a bit to actually get it writing at all again. Um, and I've noticed that a little bit with this pen. Um, but 
it's a it's a pretty common thing with you know flex. Uh, the snapback is pretty quick, uh, which is really great. Now you would have noticed a couple of issues here already. Firstly, in the writing sample, occasionally there's a slight hard start, um, and then we saw this issue here after I'd flexed it. When it's writing with flex, the flow it keeps up super super well, and the flex at like the width of the flex is super impressive. But then you get hard starts. You get hard starts after you know it, trying to get it writing occasionally. Um, now. A lot of that has to do with the fact that when you're writing like this, you're letting a lot of ink through and it does take time for the ink to come back down. Um, the other issue, I think, is that um, the setting of the nib against the feed, um, I don't know how visible that is, but there is a ever so little like, it's not, not even necessarily a gap, it's just not making perfect, perfect um, contact. And so, that capillary action for that, you know, the uh, sitting against the feed, you need really great contact to allow the ink to really work its way down to the nib, to the tip of the nib. When it's writing, it's amazing, and the flex of this pen is unbelievable. Like that's un that's unreal. Is that a Japanese extra fine? I don't think so. That to me looks more like a, a Japanese fine uh, or a, like a a Western extra fine perhaps, but I'm not complaining about that when you can get to this width, which is well over one and a half millimeters. And that's without like pushing it to what I think is its absolute like hardest. Um, I just don't want to like ruin the nib, of course. You can buy replacement nibs uh, for this pen, by the way, uh, from Blue Dew. Um, so we are seeing a lot of line variation. It's not a smooth nib. It's not designed for that. But when it's writing, when it's when it is writing, it keeps up well. There are just a few issues occasionally afterwards, like that, where the nib has actually just stopped, like the the, the flow has just sort of been interrupted. So let's talk pros and cons now for the Blue Dew Flex. Firstly, I have to say I think this is a really nice pen. I think I love the simple, elegant design of the pen. It's super classic and super yeah, as it elegant. Um, I do enjoy this material. Um, the tortoiseshell, like with those blacks and oranges and the little bit of like shimmery material in there, I think is really beautiful. Like, look at that. Like, it's lovely. Um, and they've done a great job designing a really simple, elegant pen as a vehicle for this nib. Um, let's start with the cons. So the two issues are, firstly, if you're using this for like everyday writing, you are going to find that nib to be scratchy. If you're using it for calligraphy or you know that or flexing you're probably somewhat expecting that and the payoff of that line variation is unreal the other issue is the occasional flow let's be real like that actually is that's going to be a problem if you're flexing the pen a lot and if you're writing with it and then you have to like get it started you know the next time you put the pen to the page that's that's a bit that's a bit tricky um Let's talk about the price here in between the pros and the cons. The pen costs 88 US dollars, um, which I think is a reasonable place in the market for it. Uh, it's, and that I think is including shipping from Blue Dew for memory. Um, it's a well-made pen. It's nice material. It's got a unique nib on it that does some unique things. Uh, so 88, I don't think is a terrible place for this pen. The, the pros, when it's writing, the flow is great and it's super wet and that flex is excellent. The line variation is up there with calligraphy nibs. It's much more than I've found from most standard steel modern flex nib pens, even some gold nib pens. They're not going to flex like this. So that is a big, you know, um, a really big pro. The other pro I have for this pen is I, I like the feel in the hand because it's got a sort of a... Not a, not a big section at all, but like it's a comfortable section. The threads are smooth. That little step down there is not too bad. It's a decent size posted. It feels really nice in the hand. And I also really like the material. I think it's unique. Well, it's not necessarily a unique material, but I think it's nice to see material like this uh, in pens like this. Um, so there's lots to say for this pen and that if you're getting it simply for the flex and you're used to some other brands of uh, flex nibs, 
I think you're going to be impressed with the amount of flex available from this nib. So this was the Blue Dew Flex in the tortoiseshell. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button. Um, if you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel, get in touch. Um, I would love to hear from you. It's your support that makes this channel possible. Um, a big thank you to Blue Dew for providing this item for review. Um, it's been really interesting and I've really enjoyed playing around uh, with the flex um, of this pen. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, if you're not familiar with Blue Dew, check them out online. I'll link them down below. Uh, they've got just said, lovely materials and this pen I think is pretty cool. So thank you for watching. Enjoy your pens. Enjoy writing. And I'll talk to you soon.